the this is the U.S. Sun. They do these dumb wordplay titles. Elon, way to go. Elon Musk, Elon, way. They try to make Elon into wordplay for a long way to go. At least I think that's what's happening here. Elon, way to go. Elon Musk says humans need to move to Mars as sun will one day engulf Earth. Now, Elon Musk says all sorts of cool stuff all the time that has this, you know, forward looking perspective. And it's unfortunate that a billionaire government profiteer like Elon is uh, humanity's voice in, in, in so many ways on, on looking ahead. But yeah, this is something that we all need to be thinking about. Elon Musk has reiterated his call for humanity to become an interplanetary species. In order to save itself from extinction, the billionaire who founded U.S. rocket firm SpaceX was a guest on the podcast Sway on Monday, where he warned that mankind must populate Mars to avoid the destruction of Earth as it is engulfed by the sun. Now, what is that? Uh, th this is so now I got to go look at Elon and be critical. And this is kind of unfortunate because. Scientists believe our star will expand and swallow parts of the solar system, including our planet, within the next six billion years. Elon, I, I think we need to, to plan for this with based on motivations that are, that are a little more urgent than something six billion years from now. Now, of course, solar, I, I think there's a lot of reasons. Like, I really, as soon as we can, we should be doing this. And as I said, like I'm a fan of not NASA because it's an it's 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 a horrific bureaucracy that does really bad things, but is, and is paid for with the theft of taxation. But has done people within NASA have done some pretty incredible things. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. The thing is, that's only possible because of the consolidation of and even with what Elon Musk is doing here and Jeff Bezos. These, the, this, the space exploration that humanity is engaged in today is made possible by the unnatural concentrations of wealth and power at the expense of the common people of the world. And you go, but Adam, I, you thought you liked that we went to the moon. Yeah, well, with the money that we spent on that project in, you know, in, in, the, in the 60s, could we have ended world hunger? Could we have brought the internet to the world population sooner? And right now, global internet population or internet penetration is only 42%. 58% of the world's population doesn't have regular access to the internet. How much would that increase the, the, the hive mind's capability by bringing in so many other human minds, increase our capabilities of having better space travel? You know, you remember watching the Jetsons, you know, in the 70s and 80s, right? And for me growing up in the 80s and going like, yeah. I thought we'd have flying cars by now. What the fuck? You know, well, we kind of do. We have we have flying little drones that are, but they're not in what? Wi wi and even that, you can look right now today and go, why don't we all have self flying cars? Because government. We kind of take it for granted. Oh yeah, well we need government to build the the roads. Really, for this infrastructure subsidization of the oil, gas, and automotive industry that are heavily subsidized in plenty of other ways. It has led us to become stuck economically by the lack of proper incentivization in this current paradigm of transportation of an internal combustion engine spinning four rubber wheels down a paved surface. Do you know how much better we're capable of already? And you look at that and you go, well, this is insane. But if you think about what I'm saying, to say, like, look, this these concentrations of wealth that do this shouldn't exist. I'm not saying it shouldn't happen. I'm not even saying it shouldn't happen now. Now, maybe if we correct it right now and we said, hey, this money is stolen, we have to do our best to give it back to the people, right? So NASA has no money. Musk has no money. Bezos has no money or to, to whatever extent. You know, we crash the dollar. We reset the global economic system. And, and and we have a, a re-leveling of the playing field. And it's not that, hey, we're going to steal everything and try to create some sustained government system to give it to everybody equally. No, but that we get rid of these unnatural spikes, these concentrations of wealth and power that exist at the expense of everyone else. So we can, we can level it that way, get back to the natural uneven texture of reality, of, of humanity, of a, of a peaceful 
market-based society based on voluntary, respectful, peaceful interaction as opposed to the violent corporatism, fascism, socialism, and communism that we live under today. Well, yeah, you'd have a temporary setback in space development until everybody goes, oh shit, I have tons of disposable income. What can I, what can I invest it in? And when the people of the world have their birthright returned to us, the ability to claim land and own and generate wealth, our ability to fund space travel in a way that's really in line with meeting human needs as opposed to the needs of governments and billionaires, we're going to have better, more space travel. And here's the thing. I'm not even suggesting that this is like the only way to look at it. Like, hey, we end this now and then it gets better in the future. Like, no, like, let's go back in time. You can do this thought exercise and say, like, if governments weren't stealing from their people en masse the way that they have been for the last uh, century or two through modern bureaucratic governments, the people would be so much wealthier that we would be able to see this demand for space exploration, for 3D printed rocket ships that you're going to be able to move to Mars and from your backyard. You know, I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing we might be capable of today if it wasn't for government interference in the economy over the last century even. But what can we do about it today? Uh, I mean, you can kind of cheer on Elon Musk and all the, the wonderful things that he's doing and the crazy things that he says and what he truly represents for pushing humanity forward technologically and at the same time say, we need to do better than this. Uh, this technology needs to be a, a appropriately decentralized in its control. Uh, you know, as much as I'm a big tech optimist, uh, I am scared of every new technology that comes out as long as government exists. I mean, even Google, you know, we're pretty excited about Google and I wouldn't uh, say that it's had a net negative effect, but now you go, oh, back doors into your cell phone because uh, Google Alphabet can be threatened by government. You want a chip in your brain like Elon is working on? Could you trust Elon Musk's company in a world in which this government exists? To not somehow go to him and put a gun to his head and say, you're going to put a backdoor in that chip. We won't let you put chips in other human beings' heads unless you secretly allow us a backdoor to control them and turn them off and, and zap people's brain. Maybe that's a bit uh, you know, of a sensationalist exaggeration, but that's just my feeling. Uh, I shouldn't say feeling because the facts don't care about your feels. But that's my analysis of this technology, and it, it gives me all the more motivation to both advance the technology and advance the demise of government so that we can employ this technology in a fair and righteous and humane way.